Okay, so we're doing something called bee's breath, or you know, they used to call it in Sanskrit, brahmari. You don't need to remember that, but bee's breath, the way it goes is you, and you don't have to do this yet, I'm just gonna show you, you cover your eyes, you kind of plug up your ears, but don't shove your thumbs into your ears. Just like press in on that part there that covers the valve. You've covered your eyes, you've pressed in on your ears to cover that little valve so that you can kind of hear your voice inside your head. And then you just hum. Mm -hmm. So for when you've got your eyes closed and your ears closed, it has this really interesting like effect where you really can't hear anything else that's going on. The purpose of which is if you're having some sensory stuff where you're feeling really overwhelmed sensory wise, or you feel yourself just really like needing a break or you just want to shut down what's going on is a really great like centering yourself and focusing inward um, practice. So right now my dogs are freaking out and I'm getting really distracted. So this is going to be very helpful for me to do. So let's start by closing eyes. If you're comfortable, if you're not comfortable, you can just plug your ears. That's okay. Um, and you're muted. So I can't hear you. You can hear me and I'm okay. If you hear me hum, that's not a problem, but let me mute this too. So we don't get uber distracted. All right. So if you're comfortable, you can close eyes and just put the hands on top. It feels good to put the pressure on the eyes too. That's actually on purpose. We're doing that. We're not just closing your eyes because it feels kind of good to have a little bit of pressure in your eyes. And then we'll go ahead and close your ears. Hopefully you can still hear me. And then we're gonna take a deep breath in. And then we're gonna hum. All right, stop. You can hear me, just, just sit for a second. That might've felt really weird. All right, let's try that again. I know for me, I didn't take nearly as deep a breath as I needed to because like I ran out really quick. So we're gonna take a nice deep inhale. We're gonna exhale by humming, okay? So eyes are closed if you like, breathing in. Closing the ears and humming. Okay, cool. What we're also doing is we're vibrating our vagal nerve, which runs down our spine. Um, it's like a, actually it's multiple nerves. It's three nerves wrapped around each other and it helps control our like sense of peace and relaxation. So by humming, we vibrate it, which makes it kind of come awake and chill us out. One more breath, okay? So we're gonna cover the eyes, breathing in nice and deep. Close the ears. And exhale with a hum. Mm -hmm. Whoo, that was weird, but in a good way. If you're still humming or got your eyes closed or ears covered, you can feel free to stop at this point. So, oh, I gotta wake up my eyes. That was kind of interesting. I like it though. I've done that before when I felt a lot of just noise and a lot of sensory stuff. I was in the car. My kid was screaming, like my baby was screaming and I just needed a minute. So I just did that and kind of like shut myself down. And because I was humming, I couldn't hear any of the screaming, any of the noise that was going on. It was actually kind of helpful to give myself a little bit of a break, help me kind of like center myself and settle down. So that's called bee's breath. Um, really old, interesting little breathing uh, mechanism. So now that we've shut our ears down, we're going to open them up by listening to a song. So if you're watching this recording later, I'm going to pause it and play the music. Otherwise, it won't let me upload it to YouTube because there'll be a copyright issue. So what you're going to do is if you're watching later, you're going to pull up Slay, Roy, Slay Ride by Leroy Anderson. That's what we're going to listen to. So go ahead and pull it up now and listen to it when you're ready. When you're done, you can come back to the video. And I'm going to say this real quick for my recording people too. What you're going to do is you're going to listen to the song 
I'm going to challenge you to take all of your attention and focus it on the song. So we've got the constant chatter of thoughts going on in our brain all the time. We got to give that a job. So we're going to give this kind of monkey brain the job of like, I need you to listen to this song intently. You're going to feel the need to distract yourself. You're going to feel the need to wander, you know, other thoughts, other places. That's okay. We'll bring it back to the song. The piece I want you to really focus on is this song was written to sound like an actual ride in a sleigh, like with horses and through the snow and riding around. So your job is to listen to the ways in which he composed this song to sound like a sleigh ride. So think about what is in this piece that makes it sound like an actual ride on a sleigh. So, okay. Lots of different things happening in that song. So, and you can respond in the chat if you're here live. If you're not here live, you're watching later, you're just gonna have to think, you know, aloud. What were the things that made that piece sound like you're on an actual like sleigh ride? Again, chat, welcome. You can unmute, whichever works for you. And it's okay if you like heard a certain instrument, you don't know what the name of it is. Like it's all right, just you know, describe it as best you can. No stress. The bells, the clop song. Yes, yeah, so the sleigh bells, definitely um, when you're hitting the sleigh bells, they're like this little, like they hang down, you know? Anyway, it's supposed to sound like the bells that the horses would wear, like and make a little jingle sound as they walk around or as they trot about. Um, so that's cool. And then the clop is like the clop, 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 sounds like the horse hooves. So that's neat. There's a couple other things that I heard. Um, I want to see if anybody else had something that they had noticed. They've got, um, so at the very end you hear the brrrr. That's a trumpet made to sound like a horse kind of whinnying. So that was really neat. And then the last one is the smack. They do that all the time. So it's not like a whip. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate. Um, but it's supposed to be like, uh, da -da -da. oh, how does it go? Um, da -da 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 that's supposed to be like you're making the horse giddy up and go. So anyway, um, I just really like the thought behind it. It's not just a song. They like really took the time to uh, put a little extra, you know, sound effects in there. So when we pay attention mindfully to the song, I mean, this song is all over the place right now because it's December. And so every store you go into every whatever it's got christmas music playing and this is on a lot a lot and so if you've never mindfully listened to it though you may have missed these really cool sound effects so that's one thing and just that's mindfulness is honestly just noticing what's going on without judgment and you might learn something that's kind of cool is that you it's same thing as like when we go on our mindful hikes and i walk outside and I notice something I've never seen before. Well, that's mindfulness. You know, you just, you, it doesn't mean you're going to see something or going to hear something that you've never heard. You may have heard this song a thousand times and you're never going to hear something different, but you're still attending to it, mindfully noticing it, really just being in the present moment with it and sitting with it. That's what mindfulness is. The bonus is that you might encounter something that you've never seen before. So I love it. Mindfulness is just, a beautiful thing and so if you're a music lover if you like to listen to music you're probably doing it already you're probably listening mindfully to things if ever you're like whoa i really like that bass line or wow that solo was so great or i you know this song just really like ooh, hits me in my feels it's a good thing that's mindfulness because it means you're really sitting with it and like appreciating it enjoying it it's a great way to process emotion i mean most ancient, ancient peoples, I talk about this all the time, but it's so true, our, our brains, our caveman brains, and our ancestors would sit in drum circles and send messages to each other using percussive instruments and dance, and all of that was very uh, necessary to help deal with emotions and cope with loss. That's why there's a lot of music involved in funerals and ceremonies and weddings. We like to merge our emotions with music is kind of a vehicle for dealing with things, um, both happy and sad. 
So music is powerful. Mindfulness is powerful. So you just, when you're really noticing it and you're paying attention to it, that's when it really converges and becomes awesome. Just like a really cool, just beautiful marriage of things. So love it. The next song you listen to, try to listen to it mindfully. You don't even have to like the song. So that's mindfulness too. Is mindfulness is not about find something you like. It's, you know, you just pay attention to what's going on because then otherwise you wake up and it's like 30 years later and you're like, how did that happen? So cool. Um, I have four decks here. Somebody type in the chat one through four, just pick a number one through four. We're going to leave this to fate. Four. Awesome. All right. Now, the next number, whoever gets there first. This is the Mindful Practices for All Ages deck, Growing Mindful. So I have no idea. They're facing away from me. Uh, somebody give me a number between one and, oh gosh, 52. Forty-two. Sam, you're making me count. Here I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 19, 20, 21, 22. This better be good. 23, 24, 25, 26. Just kidding. 17, 29, 30. I know it will be good. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Ooh, interesting. Okay, this one we might have to actually get up and, and go do something, all right? Let me see. It says color by number. We're not actually coloring though. It says you're gonna go to the nearest window and just look out and see if you see anything that's alive. And then after you've noticed to see if you see anything alive, you're going to notice every shade of green in your vision. Now, let's presume you're in a place where maybe you can't look out the window, okay? Then what you're gonna do is just look around where you're sitting and do the exact same thing. Find something alive and look at all the things that are green in your field of vision. So I'm gonna go just to that window right there and I'll try to talk loud where you can hear me. And I'm gonna look for alive things and I'll tell them aloud to you. And I'm gonna look for green things, okay? And since it's like almost winter, there's not gonna be so much green. So here we go. Go do it now. Do it now. Okay. I'm at my window. I'm looking for things that are alive. I'm not seeing much. I feel like a creeper. Oh, hang on. Okay. okay, so in terms of alive stuff, I'm seeing nothing. So if you saw something alive, put it in the chat. I'm just curious if you had better luck than I did. In terms of green, there is a lot of little tiny green grass, like almost like clover here. There's some residual leaves that just haven't fallen off yet that are a little like light green. And there are some pine trees in the distance, which as you know, are evergreen. So they're, ne they're gonna be green all year. I mean, honestly, that's about it. So tell me what you saw. Did you see anything alive? Did you see anything green? Ah, there are chats waiting for me. Neighbors bushes, yes, 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 yes. Very good, very good. I saw nothing alive. I even looked for a bird. No use. Barely alive grass. Yup. Welcome to winter in Georgia. It's going to be brown and gray for the next three months. Hooray! So, but yeah, so that was a good one. I like that that one was interactive. Thank you for that, Sam. I appreciate it. Very cool. So, and what does that have to do with mindfulness? Well, again, we just went outside and noticed things and it doesn't make you instantly happy. That's not what mindfulness is. It's not here to like 
suddenly I feel happy because I looked at some half dead grass. That's not what mindfulness is. But it does take us out of our own head. So if you have been spending this time stressing out about something that you need to get done, homework, you know, just worried about something, or reflecting on something maybe that was bothering you that already happened, like something that happened earlier today. I had a guy be really mean to me today, actually a stranger um, at the recycling place, just randomly, just really mean. And so instead of like reflecting on things that happened, when we give our monkey brain a job, go outside or go look outside, find something alive, find something uh, green to look at, it takes us out of those like negative, just reinforcing cycles of thoughts, you know, interrupts some of that, like, uh, you know, I don't want to say obsessive, but like we do kind of ruminate on stuff, you know? So that's mindfulness being in the moment instead of living in the recycling moment that I had or freaking out about something that hasn't happened yet or going, even just something as, as benign as what am I having for dinner? Like, let's not live out there. Let's not live back then. Let's, let's be right here right now. That's all we really have is this moment. So by practicing that regularly, um, that's how we improve our brain. And I'll say this last thing. If you didn't see what I posted today, I thought it was great. So, um, I just lost the game. And if you don't know what the game is, it's everybody's playing the game. You've, you've been playing the game your whole life. And if you think about the game, you lost. Now you don't lose forever. Like you still play. You just lost that time and you could lose over and over again. So if you think about the game, you lose. So, and then you also have to declare, I lost the game. And then everybody around you loses the game because you made them think about it. Mindfulness is the opposite. Where instead of playing the game with the breath, and if you think about the breath and you breathe, then you win. So you're playing this game for the rest of your life. Every time you think about the breath, you're breathing, you win. So if you just thought about your breath right now, you won. So And you lost the game. And that's okay. We all lose the game, and we can all win the breath. So the end. That's all I have.